Hey everybody, welcome back. Andy up here. Woody going to cover some basic painting today. Today we're going to be working on a commission for someone. Uh, this is a commission for Laura. Uh, this is in fact going to be a elf great weapon fighter, I believe. This is the commission. Let me just double check my paperwork, make sure we've got all the colors correct and everything for us today. Uh, don't have a lot to go by here, but we'll do our best to give her what she'd like. Um, we're going to be using a Dark Haven Legends by Aretha uh, miniature. We're just going to pull up our little chat here real quick to make sure that we are painting it the way that she would like. We don't have a whole lot of color references right now. So uh, Laura, if you're watching, please feel free to chime in and say, hey, I, I like that color, I don't like that color. Let's go ahead and see what we get here. All right, so right from the get go, we've got a two piece model. These are a little more challenging. Sometimes they're easier to paint, but you know, it can be a bit of a pain to get those to stick properly, get them to sit nice. Uh, let's see, how's this one gonna fit together right out of the box? And the arm's going to pop into the socket right there. It looks like it should actually sit pretty good. It's a pretty tight union right there. We can point. I don't know how well you can see this, but we can point right here and let you guys see. Here we go. Like this right here. We want to make sure that that seam is as tight as we can get it. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to look this model over and we're going to take care of flashing. So the first thing we should probably do is clean up this bit so that it's ready to go, ready to paint. Everything's happy and out of the way. Now, <clears throat> I haven't taken the time to wash this yet, so these should probably get washed and dried just to make sure there's no mold release on them and not gonna have any problems. So step one today is we're just gonna clean this up. Then we'll go ahead and take maybe a 15 minute break. I'll go ahead and get these washed up and we'll go from there. So tune in, hope you're enjoying. Um, if you see anything I do that's horrible or a rotten mistake, or you think I just suck, please shout out in the comments. Give a thumbs up if you like. If you want to see more of these videos, give us a shout out and let us know. All right, so we're going to start by looking this over really good for scribe lines. Like usually right down the arms, you'll see a little scribe line. We're just going to take the edge of our knife ever so slightly. And we don't want to get rid of like intentional details. We just want to get rid of the ones that they didn't want us to have. Um, the inside of the cloak here, you see we've got this little divot. We're just going to trim that off as flush as we can get it. It's not going to be the end of the world if some of it's left behind, but we just want to make sure that it doesn't have any raised bits. And you can see we can scrape the oxidization off and it'll be bright and shiny. Nothing to freak out about. Pretty normal. Just want to chase this all the way around like we can see right here on the neck. I don't know how well you can see it in the camera, but there's a line going right across here. And we just want to scrape that line out. Now, sometimes you get lucky and they'll blend in to whatever model you're working on, but that is not my luck. And since I'm doing it for someone else, I'm gonna take the extra time to just make sure that we do it right. We're gonna scrape it two ways and that's gonna make sure that we get the line out of there. But then on top of that, it's gonna make sure that we get any chatter marks from our tool off of there. <clears throat> some point I am going to have to grab something to drink here. Dying of thirst. So that's not looking too bad. I'm not seeing anything out. You know what? I spoke too soon. A little bit of a scribe line. Just hiding in there on the upper arm. Number one thing is don't rush. Attention to detail. Take care of the little things. Big things will take care of themselves. There we go. Looks pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Just a hint of a scribe line on the bottom of the sheet. So we're going to go ahead and take that off. Oh, just a hint of one on the top too. So we're just going to very lightly. All right. Oh, air compressor is running. Let's go ahead and turn that off. We're not going to be doing any airbrushing today. So we'll go ahead and kick that off. I was doing some uh, some base painting earlier on some stuff. Must have left it on. That's all right. 
All right, so we're going to look. We're going to see that there's one right down the side here. We're just going to make sure that that's smoothed out. Again, you know, it's not the end of the world. And you can definitely paint one of these models and never give a care. And that's okay if you're a new painter or this is your first time painting. Perfectly fine. And sometimes, especially on these uh, white metal ones, you get these little stringers, these little, I think they're air vents um, from the molding process. And they can leave these little whiskers. You just pop those off, work them back and forth a little bit. And uh, here on the outside of this leg as well, we've got just a smallest touch of one. And we're not looking to re-sculpt the miniature here. So it's just a really light touch. I know it looks dramatic because you're seeing the really bright silver area um, emerge, but that's just because we're barely rubbing off a little bit of that oxidized finish. And that's, that's pretty normal. It's going to brighten right up. It's not going to affect the way that it paints at all. It's not going to create features. It's not going to uh, make new patterns or anything that are going to be uh, uh, difficult to get rid of or hide. Now we can see right in here, right along the back, got just a, a very small one. We're going to get in there really good. I hope you can see this. If you can't, I do apologize. Try to get the camera in a lot closer for you guys today. And you know what? I might even be able to get it in even more. But I feel like if I go too far there, I'm going to be right off the frame. So bear with me. All right, we got to just look over here. And the best way is like when I when I roll it in the light, I can usually catch the highlight and the shadow. So right now I can see that it starts right up here under this arm. And you're, truthfully, some of these you'll never see. All these will be hidden back underneath the cloak. You just want to make sure that we get it because we know it's there. All right. And, uh, Got a beautiful sculpt here. These uh, these Dark Haven Legends are absolutely marvelous miniatures. Um, ooh, ooh! I I feel like I just called them by their competitor's name, and that's not even right. Um, let's say wonderful miniatures. All right, absolutely wonderful miniatures. Not that there's anything wrong with uh, marvelous miniatures, but definitely not the same thing. Uh, Reaper has been turning out fantastic miniatures for decades now, it seems like. Uh, they've definitely been around for a while. I don't know the exact time period. Feel, a, feel free to shout out in the comments if you do know. We're just looking over the, the hilt of this sword. I'm not 100% in love with it. There's just a little, yep, yep, that's what I thought. One of those little air bubble things or air stems. Okay, so we got that cleaned up. That's looking pretty good. This actually isn't going to need a whole lot of cleaning. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a quick minute here and get this cleaned up. And I feel kind of bad. I started the stream. I got you all watching. Everybody's checking this out. And uh, uh, I feel a little bad now because I'm going to walk away from you for a minute. I'm going to turn off the stream and I'm going to go wash this mini because I should have done that first, but I'm still learning. I make mistakes too. It's okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to stop this. I'm going to go wash this and I'm going to be back five or 10 minutes, however long it takes to just wash this and dry it real quick. All right. Look forward to seeing you back here in just a second. Consider it like a commercial break. Okay. And we're back with a uh, slightly cleaner miniature. All right. Sorry about that. You know, the devil's in the details. I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you all, you know, make sure you're doing your steps the right way. But, you know, the truth is, if you're going to get a good paint job, you got to start with a clean miniature. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just make sure that this one's looking good and shiny. Yeah. See that? We got most of that oxidization off there. Any remaining mold release or material. This is such a great miniature. I absolutely love this. It's going to look so good on the table. I'm almost a little bit jealous. Uh, if I was ever going to play a female elf great weapon fighter, this is it. I think it looks epic. Looks so cool with its uh, bear cloak on. And it's got a whole other sword on its hip. So she's got her hand on another sword underneath her cloak. She is just ready for business. I mean, that is going to look 
so phenomenal when it's done. Let's just hope we can paint it and do it a little bit of justice. Sorry again about the delay. Apologize if you moved on and got on with your life and have left us behind in the dust. We understand. Can't argue with your logic a bit. I'm going to set that down there and start getting our things ready. All right. As always, we have our um, three handy dandy brushes, which we will pretty much paint this entire miniature with. We have our wet palette just slightly off video here. You won't be able to see it in this video because we wanted to, the focus to be on the painting, not on the, the paint mixing this time around. Um, we're going to go ahead and prepare a little bit of parchment paper and prepare our wet palette and get the paints out that we're going to need. Um, and then I know I told you we weren't going to airbrush. But I lied. We're going to airbrush a little bit. We're going to go ahead and be uh, base painting this, doing some highlights, getting it all set up so that Laura can have one of the nicest minis on the table because she should. It's just that simple. If you actually commission a piece to be done, it should look pretty freaking amazing, right? Now, again, I'm I'm not a a golden brush painter or some epic, you know, uh, Bob Ross type. I'm not going to paint the 16th chapel here. We're, we're just painting the miniature and we're going to do our best to make it look really nice. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over the whole thing with a quick shot of black. All right. And color it up. And we're going to make sure that first off, we've got our black and it's thinner properly. Okay. Looks good. We're looking for this really nice Nice thin paint. You can see how thinly that is. All right, that's going to work really good through our airbrush. All right, now I think we have enough pressure in our gun right now to go ahead and shoot this without having to get too, too concerned. So we're just going to shoot a little bit of water into our uh, gun here. Make sure that everything's spraying correctly. Can you wetten up the cup just a little bit? All right, put a few drops of black in here. And, uh, you know, don't get me wrong. You can absolutely use a really nice holder or something like that. And that's all well and good. And, you know, if you don't want to have fingers painted black, you know, I strongly recommend it. Make sure that we're shooting color there. We're just going to start to ghost it in here just a little bit. All right, welcome back, Alicia. Sorry for uh, leaving you behind here. And all we're doing is we're just trying to put on a very light coat. And this will make all of our highlights look a little nicer. This will make everything that we do from here forward stand out a little bit better. We just throw a little bit on our base. And, you know, we're not putting down a whole lot at a time here. We're trying to build it up very smoothly, very evenly. We don't want any runs. All right. We want to make sure that we're getting all that detail. We want to make sure that we're getting all the angles. Because, boy, if you miss one, you'll know. We're not really worried about the base just yet. That's why uh, you don't see me doing a lot of focus on it. We want to make sure that we get her on the underside because, you know, if you miss a spot when you paint this and it's black, it won't look nearly as bad as if it's bare metal. And you know, it's a bonus and a burden that when you get a model, it's got a ton of detail. Getting all the angles to get all that detail painted can be a real challenge. And a lot of new painters will rush the base coat step where they won't base coat at all. They'll just start painting the raw model. And I'm not saying you can't do it that way. You absolutely can but you may not get the result that you're looking for. You may not end up with the model 
that you visualized in your head. And you see we're just about there. And the paint that I'm putting out right now is literally uh, almost dry when it's hitting the model. I mean, I'd really, like I really have to try to get wet paint at this point. And we're just easing it on. We're not concerned with, you know, if we rub through a spot or something on the base, it's not gonna be the end of the world. And we're gonna mount this model to something to make it a little easier to hold here real soon. I'm just gonna look up from the bottom here, make sure that we got all those little recesses, all the little uh, dangly bits and dingly bits. Hope you're enjoying this. Please uh, feel free to like and share this. Um, the more of you that do, the more of these we'll make. Um, absolutely trying to get as many of these out there for you guys as we can. All right, and there she is. So all set to go. Um, camera has now decided she is black and it does not want to focus. Okay, excellent. Okay, so we're going to do the cloak just because we've already got the airbrush out. And uh, you know what? We're going to be smart here a second. Instead of uh, continuing down the road of darker and darker and darker and darker uh, fingertips, I'll get out a little piece of paper towel here because this shouldn't actually be as complicated as she was. And we'll be able to actually see with the paper towel how thin the coats are that we're putting on here. I'm just kind of building it up, chasing all these little highlights, all these little angles. And you know, as you get opacity, Go around, make sure you're getting all your edges, and all your angles. As you get opacity, you'll slowly see that start to become a finished piece. All right. And we'll set that down and we'll turn it over because it's safe to go ahead and turn it over because as we said before, we're painting almost dry. We really are. And this almost looks like uh, maybe a Vanta Black or a Black 2.0 that we're using as a base coat here. It's actually a little flatter than I would probably use, but considering we're going to come back here in just a second with the Xenophil, um, should be just fine. The thing we have to be mindful of is that this is a little fragile to being touched and handled, but it really shouldn't make a difference. If there's one little spot that ends up uh, with a silver, silver edge before we paint it or we rub through a spot, it should be just fine. And that's going to be good enough for what we're doing here. Okay, so now we're going to just take a second. We're going to clean up our airbrush, run a little clean soapy water through it. Make sure that we get all that out of our gun because it's only going to run as well as you maintain it and keep it clean. Uh, a lot of people asking, you know, like, hey, how do you how do you use an airbrush? Uh, how do you take care of an airbrush? And I tell them all the same thing. You clean one a lot. Um, and the better you take care of them, the better and more reliable they're going to be. Um, you don't need a million dollar airbrush. I mean, I think these are Iowatas, uh, maybe a hundred bucks each, maybe $79 for some of them. This is just a, uh, a Neo, and uh, it's a great little brush. It's treated me really well for a long time. I just clean the cups out really good, make sure I wipe them down, make sure that they're spraying good. And that's just spraying water at this point. All right, it's good to go. Wipe off our bench, make sure we're good there. Start warming up the old hot gluer over here. All right, we're learning how to discuss colors for a second. Right, now, we know we got an elf, all right, so we're going to be looking at uh, fairly light skin, although we could go a little 
a little richer in color. Um, could end up with something a little, a little fancier, uh, a little more of a tan look. Um, it's not a uh, a drow or anything like that, so we shouldn't have to worry about having like purples or blues or anything like that. It should be pretty straightforward skin. Um, might do some non-metallic effects on the uh, the blade here as we go along. Um, but all in all, I think we're going to end up with some pretty classic colors here. Some pretty classic barbarian adventuring colors. This is definitely going to be, I think, a frost wolf. I think that's, uh, that's what we're going to end up with for the cloak. Uh, unless unless y'all think bear skin. If you guys think bear skin, uh, shout it out in the comments. If you think frost wolf, shout it out in the comments. Those with the most comments win. All right, so who do we got all here today? Hey, Suzanne, welcome and thanks for joining us. Um, all right, so again, just waiting on that hot glue gun to warm up a little bit. And we're going to attack this on a base just temporarily to make it a little bit easier to paint without having to touch and, and handle it. So we're going to turn around here for just a second. Uh, well, I'm going to You're going to stay right there. And obviously, you're not coming with me. And uh, we are going to go ahead and grab our uh, paint base holder and we're going to go looking through our pile of pumps over here and see if we have a one inch base or something that we can throw this on real quick to just make it a little, a little easier to paint. All right. Uh, I always tell people anytime you get extra bases or stuff, always hang on. You never know when they're going to come in super handy. All right. And this is a perfect example of having an extra one is going to be super handy. So we've got our base here, all right? And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some scribes in it. And even if this was the permanent base, I would still do this, all right? When it's all textured and based and everything, you're never going to see any of this, all right? It's just going to uh, disappear. It's going to be all below scenery and everything. This is what's going to make your miniature uh, actually stick to the base. And we're going to see how many times I can stab myself with uh exacto knife here. This is a little different for me. I'm working at a, a slightly further back uh, uh, location so that you guys can get a better view. Um, cool. Not bleeding. Always a bonus. All right. And we're going to look at the bottom of this. And this is actually this as well. We're going to put just a little bit of tooth to this. All right. And all this is going to do is give the, the hot glue a bit of a grip. All right. And as soon as we got this done, we'll go back and we'll hit that Xenothaw highlight. And you can, you can see just that little bit of touching, how we've begun to rub the high points off. All right. You see that bit of twinkle? So the more that you handle these when they're base coated and unprotected, the more uh, uh, damage you're going to do. So what we're going to do so that we don't have to wrestle with her in a minute is we're going to open this up now. And we're going to slap our base in there. All right. And our base will be ready to go. All right. And we'll go over here and check our hot glue gun. All right. We're starting to make plastic, but we're not really to hot glue yet. So we're going to, we're going to just take a moment. Uh, what we can discuss real quick is uh, flow aid. All right. So I use these little bottles here and I make my own flow aid. And I know I mentioned it before and I showed you guys the new finish, but I had a couple people ask on the last video. Uh, how much do you use? So I'm going to show you. Um, let me uh, uh, zoom out here just a second. All right, because we don't need to be zoomed all the way in. Got our uh, finish jet dry right here. All right. And you can see just that little bit. All right. Just enough to tint the water, just a hint of blue. All right. And that is going to be more than enough for that entire bottle. We'll then grab our just water. All right. We'll go ahead and we'll fill this bottle up. Usually I do this at the sink and uh, that way, you know, I don't have to fill the water bottle afterwards. But since you guys asked, this is it. That's it right there. That's how we make our flow aid. We use it in a lot of our painting, um, a lot of our painting. This will let your paint lay flat instead of wanting to bubble up. Like, um, I pull my paint tray over here. All right, you can see how these are these are bubbles and droplets here. All these little paint droplets. If I take some of this, I just put it in one droplet. The first thing that happens is 
it doesn't want to doesn't want to beat up doesn't want to stand up anymore it wants to lay flat all right and that's the surface tension on the water all right and what a drying agent does is it destroys the surface tension well that is going to let your paint get into all those little details all those little nooks and crannies all right all those little dangly bits and bring them to life and help you do a better job of painting now we don't really want this on here just yet so we'll just go ahead and take that away all right so are we hot glue yet feels like we should be right all right you know what let's uh let's not just assume all right looks like hot glue smells like hot glue could be hot glue all right we're gonna use a really generous amount because this is just a temporary base this is not the permanent base but we still want it to hold on really well all right and that's going to be that as soon as that uh dries up we're not gonna be tempted to uh like smush that down because we're not doing the basing yet the basing is going to be the last thing that we actually do to this model all right we're going to do all our painting all our spraying everything long before we do the basing all right so i keep saying all right like you're going to say uh-huh and it's just not working out um the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this little piece of foam right here all right and we've got some poster putty on a toothpick and if you paint stuff that comes in a lot of pieces um like my dear friend suzanne is about to be doing as she paints her her husband's new warhammer minis um she is going to love these take a toothpick you cut it right in half right in the center you put a little ball of poster putty on here and no matter how many times you paint it you just squish it a couple of times and it gets sticky all over again all right and then you grab the part that you want to be painting you stick it to the back like that see how quick we rubbed some of that off all right and then we just shove it in a piece of foam now we've got a second holder now we've got everything exactly how we want it hey uh jeremy is watching shane's watching check it out guys appreciate having the support go ahead and like it share it if you're enjoying what you're seeing uh, if I'm getting too quiet, too monotone, and you just know that I'm a different guy, uh, except the fact that I feel obligated to whisper because the microphone is like an inch in front of my face right now mounted on this phone. So uh, if I seem extra quiet, it's not because I'm trying to do my best Bob Ross. It's because I'm trying to not scream into the microphone and blow your ears out. Uh, by the way, Shane, uh, next time you go fishing, uh, hit a brother up. Uh, we could have like covered a lot of river, just saying. And now that we can boat... That one sitting back here let's go nail them um so back to painting let's get back on track here the first thing that we're going to be doing is doing our zephyr highlight so we're going to get our airbrush out again and we're going to hit this with a lighter shade in this case we're going to use white and we're going to spray downward on the model at kind of a, a little bit of an angle we're just going to kind of shoot it straight down and create a shadow all right and if you've never done painting before what this is going to do is if you paint uh say you paint uh, a little square you paint half of it black half of it white put any color you want over that all right where it goes over white it will be lighter where it goes over black it will be darker all right so it's building a highlight into your paint job and it's going to save you a whole lot of work later when you want to create those natural shadows and natural highlights so we're going to go ahead and hit this up now and uh, make sure that this got everything it needs. Now, white is always a little less than great to spray. Uh, for some reason, it always has got just this slight gritty texture to it. Um, not really a texture, but I always get like this, uh, this spray. All right. Now, I am going to turn the compressor on for just a second. It's not going to run very long. But I do want to build up a proper amount of air so that we're spraying with the, the right uh, uh, pressure and volume. We don't want to risk uh, screwing up our model now. This is why you always put your caps on all the way. Because if you don't, you end up with crap all over your fingers. Um, so wipe off our hand, step one. Step two, wipe off the bottle. Step three, turn on the air compressor. And it's a fairly quiet little air compressor, but you know, still just the same. It is an air compressor. All right, now, whenever we prep our uh, our airbrush, the first thing I like to do is hit it with just a little bit of that 
low aid. And that kind of gets down into all the little nooks and crannies and lubricates it. We want to make sure that we get everything out of it. If there was any residual paint from the last color that we sprayed, it's going to help drive it out of there. All right, because the last thing we want to do is shoot a slug of black paint at our model. Then we're just going to put a little bit of white paint in here. Just a few drops. Don't need a lot. We're looking to just maybe fill up the base of that cup. All right, I'm going to shoot a little bit of a test pattern here. Make sure that we're getting our white paint out the way that we want. All right. I think that'll do. All right. And there we go. All right, so we're just gonna come at this really easy. We're just picking up these highlights. We're gonna pretend that the white paint that we're putting down is how sunlight would shine on our model if our model was standing outside at like 12 noon. And you can, you can angle this, you know, depending on what you want. And, uh, and there are artists out there who do wonderful effects of how highlights will lay on a character. And you can see already we created that highlight. All right, so now it looks like the sunlight's shining down. There's gonna be highlights where we want them, shadows where we need them. All right, and now here's the tricky part. All right, so we're going to hold this the way that it should be. It would be really easy to go like this. And then you would hate yourself because you would realize Cloak's actually got to sit like that. So we're just going to hit it a little bit from the top down. All right, and we're not going to worry about the underside of the cloak because that's going to be behind her. It's not gonna, you're never, you're never going to see it. No point. All right, there we go. That's all our Zenithal highlighting. No more to it than that. Again, just take a second, clean our airbrush out, make sure it's ready to go for the next time we use it. You know, take a rifle out and shoot it, you clean it. Take an airbrush out and you use it, you clean it. If you don't, what could have been a minute of cleaning now will later on turn into an hour in an ultrasonic cleaner as you're getting all the crud and crap off your airbrush. So there we go. There's our Zenithal highlights. 100% covered, 100% done. All right. So let's just take a moment and discuss this. Uh, it's really tempting uh, when you're just starting out to want to go ahead and attach the, uh, the other arm and the cloak to this. And the truth is, uh, in this particular model, it probably wouldn't make a huge difference. But if you were painting this to be like a competition model or something like that, it might screw you up. You might not be able to get into all these little details, these little nooks and crannies on the backside, all the uh, back armor, everything with it there. Uh, or you might end up having to go back and repaint things several times. And I'm here to tell you, the second that you start getting into repainting things, Several times, Ooh, see that little stringer right there? That's from the hot glue. That'll mess us up later. All right, you get into painting things several times and there was no point in doing highlights because now you've got one piece of armor that has one highlight under it and another piece of armor that might have your original highlight, your original armor color, red from the inside of the cloak, and then the best job you could do covering up the red you got on the armor. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set this over here. Just get it out of our way for a second. You know the deal. We get the brushes ready. All right. Get our paper towel. Get it with just a drop of water. Got our cup of water ready already. Ready already. That's good. Our English. I went to primary school. Suppose. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get our brush looking good now. Go ahead and work up a good lather. We want to get the brush cleaner and conditioner into the fibers of the brush because we don't want our paint in our brush. We paint, we want our paint on our brush. All right. And we're just going to go ahead and turn it, turn it, turn it, 
do it one dunk just so that we know that it's got a good shape. All right, we don't need a perfect tip for this. All right, this is a number two Windsor Newton sable hair brush. Great brush to use. All right, that brush is going to be good to go. It's going to do most of what we're trying to do here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start evaluating what is our furthest thing in. All right, furthest thing in actually looks to be probably her skin. It looks like we've got this arm here is bare. Is she wearing a glove? Okay, she is wearing a glove, but it's not tilled down at the end. So we've got a bare arm here. Um, I do believe, can't tell just yet. I don't think she's wearing pants. I think she's just wearing the classic barbarian loincloth kilt action with greaves because that makes the most sense for armor. Uh, if you're going to wade into battle and be beaten up as the tank, wear less armor. Um, let's go ahead and give credit where credit's due. She's actually wearing a shirt that goes mostly up to her neck. How'd that happen? Um, I feel like that goes against the rules of, of female armor and fantasies. Uh, not that kind of fantasy. Female fantasy armor. Jeez, you guys are such pervs. Um, so it looks like her arm, her face, and her legs, skin color. So we're going to look for a good uh, flesh color here. Um, probably mix something up. We did want a slightly more tanned color. Um, I have some Citadel paint over here. We're going to pull out and we're going to plan around the fact that she's going to get a wash later. Now, what a wash is, is a very thin coat of almost ink-like paint. Um, it's going to be very, very thin. It's going to settle into all the details. It's just going to tint everything. Uh, just the slightest uh, darker. So what we've got here is some uh, Kislev Flesh. Uh, it's a great shade. Citadel paints are really nice. They hold a lot of pigment for the paint. So you get a lot of opacity per layer while still managing very thin layers. And thin layers are everything. Um, you really don't want to have thick layers. Now, for paint, I'm just going to reach up here with the end of my brush, and I'm just going to grab that much. So that's all the paint that I'm going to need. It's probably four times more than I need. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that on our wet palette, drag a little bead of water to it, stir it in until we get it nice and thin. All right. And when I start painting this on, the first thing you're going to notice is that it's not going to cover all the way the first coat. It might not cover all the way the second coat or the third coat. And it takes several coats. It just is. All right. Um, you don't want thick coats. If you're trying to get coverage in the first coat, you're going to end up with a goopy looking model. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is come in. I'm not worried about getting to all the edges just yet. What I want to make sure is that we're not puddling. You don't want to leave any puddles behind because they'll make thick goopy paint or we'll lose detail. We're going to come back with a smaller brush and we're going to get in around her neck and everything. All right, then we're going to roll this upside down and we're going to paint on her arm. I got my brush a little bit too dry right now. It doesn't want to hold shape really well. You always want to paint with a brush that's got just a little bit of moisture in it. I'm going to go ahead and move that out of our way for just a second. All right. All we're trying to do is get up in all these recesses and all these details. Uh, later on today, if you uh, look on Facebook and you know Laura, uh, I'm not going to give out any last names here. I don't want people getting spammed or blown up. But if you know Laura, if you know the girl this is for, reach out to her and tell her, hey, I watched Woody paint your mini today. It was really cool. I found it really interesting. You put me to sleep. I managed to take a power nap after about 12 minutes. And uh, well, I just want him to stop. And I'm sure she'll appreciate that. All right.
And that sounds like a Mr. Chase has walked into my shop. Uh, he promised he'd be stopping by today to uh, harass and berate me. And I see he's made good on his word. So as soon as we get these legs painted here, we'll probably be uh, stepping away from this for a minute just to make sure that he's taken care of because we know how he is. Oh my God, he brought the blues too. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Bring that back in, bring that back in. We'd like to interrupt this broadcast to tell you what happened to the rest of this broadcast. We, we in fact have Elijah Craig, father of bourbon. Uh, for those of you who don't drink bourbon, I'm sorry about your loss. Uh, for those of you who do, na 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 na, na 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 na. Uh, so yeah, we'll be finishing up these legs and, and well, he'll probably be finishing up my legs. All right, so that's going to get our base paint for our legs knocked out. Oh, nope, we got a little bit on the front here. So let's go ahead and just make sure we got that. So when we step away, coming back to something where we want to be on it. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd apologize for leaving you guys all in the dust, but this is where if we had the power of editing and a million dollar budget, um, I could be like, hey, uh, you know, I had to step out for a minute, uh, go to commercial, edit it together. You'd never know I was gone. But it's the apocalypse. You can't find good people. Government gave everybody $600 to sit home. They don't want to come out for 100 It's just the way it is. All right. So there we go. Already looking better. Should we just call it like that? Just leave it like that and say, Laura, you know, we thought about it. We decided, the hell with it. Probably sneak a little bit more in right there real quick. All right. Catch me here in a little bit. Uh, probably slightly more intoxicated, uh, but we'll be painting. All right, everybody. Take it easy, and thanks for tuning in. Sorry about the squeak of my chair popping out. Y'all have a good one. All right. Third time's a charm. I assure you. No further interruptions. I don't think. Maybe. You never know. We stop for booze. Here uh, in the apocalypse, we only have a couple of things that we can uh, actually rejoice in. One of those is getting a little schnock. Uh, now, normally I don't advocate day drinking, but anything goes in the days of Rona. All right. Good old Rona. Our new girl. Well, I'm sure sooner or later... This whole crazy world's going to go back to some semblance of normal. When it does, we'll be okay. So where do we leave off? Okay, first coat on. I'm going to come in now, start getting in a little further to some of these details. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush just so that we can get down into some of these recesses that are a little harder to get to. And don't worry about you know, if your paint job is, is perfect in every way, because I assure you, you're going to be back painting a lot of this. If you get paint in a spot where it's not supposed to be, you can always fix it. It's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, best I know, it's never been the end for anyone yet have paint end up in the wrong spot. I hope that you all have stuck with me on this adventure. I uh, apologize for the interruption. I'd tell you that I didn't have a good time, that it was horrible, but 
truth is, I really enjoy talking to Taylor. And it's really nice when uh, he comes up here and surprises me with stuff. So, in the middle of the apocalypse, when somebody who's out on an essential errand stops in and shares a really great glass of really great bourbon with you, the only thing you can do is practice proper social distancing and have some. <clears throat> Let me just say, it was good. It was really good. Super duper good. All right, so we're looking in here to see if her back is bare. And I think, I think she's wearing a hide shirt. So we're going to stop up here at the sleeve. We're not going to paint further. So we're absolutely certain. I promise someday when I'm a big famous YouTube star and I can afford proper editing, we will double time through all of this so that you don't have to listen to me rant or suffer as I paint the less interesting bits. You can already see though, starting to come together. Even just Getting the skin paint, all of a sudden, it's like it, it finally starts to become a bit more of a model, in my opinion. It starts to look like, you know, the creature you're painting or the person you're painting. It just kind of sets the bar for how the rest of it's going to go. And boy, I'll tell you, if ever I was going to make mistakes, now is the time. It's been a while since I painted the miniature. Uh, as far as a figure. Uh, been a little distracted building a website, trying to save the shop. God, save the shop. That doesn't seem like it's been a theme since we opened. But I guess that's the plight of a small LGS is uh, one disaster to the next. You're always one bad catastrophe away from the end. And we managed to make it through okay. Don't forget to tune in this Friday night. Five o'clock, we're going to be doing our web auction. And no, uh, a lot of people have asked us, does this mean the store is closing? Not at all. This means we're looking for more and more interesting and, and better and dynamic ways to be able to bring you merchandise uh, so that we do stay open. Uh, we have fought really hard to have this store here in this town uh, this last year, and we see no reason to do away with it now. Um, some of you may be aware we're actually in the process of trying to get a small business loan. Um, we did not qualify for the uh, Paycheck Protection Program or uh, the Economic Disaster Relief Loans that are currently available. And we're not upset about that. It's just as simple as we did not have a payroll for 2019. Otherwise, we would more than qualify. But I worked full-time at my last job and my wife works full-time. And the store took off. We worked double duty. And since we didn't need the money, we did the responsible thing. We, we put the money back into the store for capital. All right. So no regrets. We did the right thing. We chased our American dream. And we're still chasing. We're not out of the race yet. Thanks to having amazing customers and friends like all of you 
we're still here and we're not done yet. So don't be upset. I don't want to see anybody being like, you know, damn government, all these negative comments. They don't help any of us. And quite frankly, it wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault at all. Ooh, ooh, does she have a ear sticking up back here? Is that what's going on? Makes sense. She doesn't help. Let's see if we can get this brush back to a nice tip to paint these ears. I got a lot of paint built up right now. Maybe we should just go ahead and take a second and clean our brush. That's if somebody told me they were doing this, I would say, clean your brush. So, good drop of water on our brush. We're going to go right to our brush cleaner, conditioner. We're going to work up a good lather. Again, our brush isn't going to be very dirty, per se, but it will hold its shape better with a little bit of cleaner and conditioner. You see, we're able to get that right back to a point. So now we're going to come back and we're just going to put paint on that point. We're going to lean in here and I'm actually going to pull her a little closer to me for just a second and just make sure that what I'm looking at is elf ears and not her hair or something. I'm pretty confident it's elf ears. So we're going to lean in here. And paint these little elf ears. Wow. There's people out there right now trying to cure cancer. People out there right now trying to uh, save us all from coronavirus. What am I doing? Paint elf ears. How can I bitch? Getting paid to paint an elf ear. Now, I can't speak for the rest of you. But in my old age, my old age, I'm 41. Uh, in my uh, older age, middle age, I find that I'm just not as steady as I used to be. So I like to use the Citadel holder, all right? And I will actually take it and plant it on the bench. And that gives me a lot of stability because I can just take a couple of fingers and that I can press it pretty firmly against the ground, all right, or the bench ground um and keep her where i want her all right and uh thanks john appreciate the uh the comments there sorry about uh stopping and starting so much today just trying to keep the ball moving you know look forward to uh seeing that sweet guitar you're building finished up uh always a, a fan of a 335 semi-hollow style can't wait to hear that dog bark. Get it up here, crank up the amp. Have a good time one of these mornings. <clears throat> okay, so that pretty much to cover all the base paint for our skin. And I'm just, I'm loving this model already. She's already looking super good. Just that little bit. You can already. This is why I like pre highlighting. Because so much of this just sits the way you want it to. It just starts, it starts putting itself together. You know, starts showing itself, letting you know exactly what you want to see. Um, I think we're doing darker hair on this. I'm going to reach out to Laura today and I'm going to say, Laura, um, did you have color preferences on any of this? I feel like I should have a card around here that says it. But I'm usually really good about the notes on these being in my books. I'm really good about having the notes of them uh, attached to the cases. Like um, if I just grab as an example, uh, almost any one of my other commissions over here, um, they've all got a card attached to them. And Loris didn't have one. So I don't know if it was just do whatever or, or what. I, I don't know Laura very well, but from what I have met of Laura, she seems like a very organized person who has a particular thing in mind. So I want to reach out to her before I go too far and just make sure that we're doing this the way that she wants. Because, well, if you're not familiar with my commission process or, or having a miniature painter, it's actually 
a few dollars. Uh, it, it's not inexpensive. Um, every hour that I sit here at the bench painting, um, you know, equates to a, a price and a value. Uh, and then there's materials and everything else. So, you know, it all adds up. And with, with that in mind, if we're going to spend that money on something, if we're going to do something up that nice, we do want to make sure that we're getting what we asked for. So uh, we will do that before our next session, but I think we're, we're safe to paint a couple things here. We're uh, safe to carry on with a couple things. Um, what do you say <clears throat> we put some leather boots on this lass and we give her a leather kilt or skirt like apparatus and go from there, see what we can come up with. Um, Let me just type to Laura real quick. I'm painting your kitty right now. Do you have colors in mind or can I just go crazy. Okay. Hey, Laura, this is Blake. I'm painting your mini right now. Did you have colors in mind or can I just go crazy? I love it. I love it when people tell me, just go crazy. It's always my favorite. It's uh, uh, as an artist, uh, as a painter, there is no more freedom than that. Hey, Wade, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you watching. Hey, Dave, see you watching too there. Nice to have you guys on board for the painting channel. Hope I don't disappoint too much. I'm just a noob at this. So, uh, you know, take about half of what I say with a grain of salt. Don't hold me too accountable. And hopefully we'll get through this together. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and change our paint water out here. Make sure that we're good to go. Give Laura just a, another minute here to answer us back before we get too committed. Um, we are going to keep going, though. We, we aren't going to stop. We've got a lot of commissions to get done and a lot of things to do. So we're not going to sit here and uh, dream. We do have one more arm that we can throw a little bit of flesh tone on. So we'll do that. Um, go ahead and move that out of the way for just a second. We'll come in here and we'll just start dabbing a little in. Again, we're not, you know, on our first coat, we're not trying to get full opacity. We're just trying to get good, even color. All right. And we can be a little sloppy with our flesh color because it's such a light color that it's really not going to affect our undershading too much. And if we have to go back and paint something over it, I'm sure that this fur hide is um, going to be painted dark enough that you'll never notice that there was a flesh tone underneath. And what did you guys think, man? Tell me what you think in the comments. Should this be a bear fur or a wolf hide? You know, give me give me your opinion. Let me, let me feel it out. Do, 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 do. Let's see. What did we say? Dave Stormer, do you use drying retardant or blending or just mix as you go? I kind of mix as I go. I do use flow aids. Um, you missed earlier or in my previous video here today. Um, where I actually put a few drops of flow aid on my palette um, just to mix my paints into and to thin it down. Uh, Dave says gray wolf. Anybody, anybody agree or disagree? Gray wolf, gray wolf pelt uh, on the uh, the elf barbarian here. Uh, shout out in the comments, please. Tell us what you think. Wait, I know you're watching. John, I know you're watching. Give us your feedback. Let us know. <clears throat> onto some uh, leather boots here. Uh, we're going to go about leather boots in a slightly different way. Um, we have some uh, some already thinned out red paint here. We're just looking for the right shade. Aha, here we go. So this is actually a color called Screamer Pink. Um, if I grab it from over here, do to do. it is Citadel Screamer Pink. I actually have a little bit in this bottle that's already been uh, thinned out these dropper bottles. You can buy 50 of them for $5 on Amazon. I highly recommend it if you're into painting because 
if you're going to take the time and the trouble to thin down a bottle of paint, then, you know, be able to save the paint. Don't just throw a whole cup away. It's really wasteful. Sorry, that was just a little air bubble on the top there. Um, it's really wasteful to just throw it away. And it's expensive. Paint's expensive, especially when you get into the higher end paints with the better pigments. So, you know, don't waste that. That's a resource. It all adds up in the end of the day. Um, so we're going to just take a dab of this. And this is going to be our base color for everything that we want to be leather. And I know you're looking at that and you're saying, that's really pink. But when we finally come back and we put our wash over the top of it, it's going to look really nice. It's just sitting here bubbling and oozing. That is so creepy and gross. Um, so we'll just take what's oozed out there naturally. All right. And then we'll take this opportunity because we notice we got a little bit of crust on the end of there. Go ahead and clean that up because we don't ever want to. That is like good advice. Um, so I'll share it with you. Always clean your tips off whenever you see that they're getting a crust or something around there. One little piece of that crust can clog your airbrush, can cause you problems, can ruin a model mid-paint job. You can end up, why is this bubbling? I don't know. We're going to get the cap on it before it runs away again. Anyway, one little piece of that crust can end up in your paintbrush, in your air gun, uh, uh, or your airbrush. Um, any one of a number of different places that are just going to cause you grief and cause you drama and make your day take longer. So, you know, keep your, keep your tips clean. Um, you'll see as I go through these, you know, I'll be pulling stuff out and they might have a dirty tip from going back in the cap, but I'll wipe that off. Uh, and usually I'll wipe it off before I, I dab a little bit, but I had a little bit bubbled up. So I knew it was clean. Um, at least that's my BS and that's what I'm going to run with. All right. Uh, so Dave, reaching out to you because I see you're very interactive, um, and uh, uh, it looks like it looks like Gray Wolf is going to win. How's that? Uh, how's that chicken coop coming, Dave? You got them? You got them chickens put away yet? Wow! Looks like I'm putting Superman's boots on her, right? But trust me, trust me, when we hit this with the wash in just a second, it's going to look super nice. When we come back over and we hit this, it's just that little bit of brown, burnt umber wash. You're going to see these boots turn to perfect leather right before your eyes. I mean, you see how my brush is starting to split a little bit there? That's because it's dirty. It's not going to be the end of the world. We pick the bristles that we want to edge with, and we just run with it. And, you know, you can obsess over having that perfect tip on your brush all you want. And Lord knows I do. I do like to have a really squared away tip on my brush. But I also accept the fact that sometimes you got to work with what you got. Now, this is where it gets tricky. So, we're going to reach between our legs with the double zombie die here. And we're going to paint with just the edge of the brush. And we did paint a little bit of her leg. That's okay. I'm going to wipe this paint off. Dip, wipe, dip, wipe. You can see how quickly we're getting a clean brush. All right because we prepped that brush really well. We're gonna go ahead and rub a little bit of brush prep into it. One more rinse, one more dab, and then we're gonna go back in here and we are going to slowly lift away that extra paint. And it's gonna be okay. We don't have to try to get all of it in one go. And truthfully, we don't have that much on here. I don't know if you can see it down in here, but there's just a tiny bit just above our boot. It's gonna make OCD trigger. But I think we got it now to the point where we can just put a little bit of flesh tone on there and be right back in business. 
Yeah, there we go. There we go. Never know that I painted her leg red. Okay, excellent. Anywho, moving on. So we got one boot kind of red and you can see as that dries, it gets a little darker. And because of our dark undertone, it stays a little rich. All right. Carries that shadowed look. All right. So now we're going to load up our brush. We're going to come over to the other boot. Same thing. We're not going to go all Canadian. Start talking about her boots. All right. You know what? That might have been a little insensitive. I apologize. But everybody loves a good boot joke. I hope that everybody out there that's watching today is watching because they're home on quarantine and not because they're homesick. Hope that everybody's feeling good. You know, the social distancing seems to be working. I mean, but then again, what do I really know? I'm just a guy who owns a card shop. I don't think that makes me a epidemiologist or anything. Uh, opinions are like bee holes Everybody's got one. But so far. Seems like we're doing okay. Governor's talking about letting us come out and play after the uh, the 15th. That'd be perfect timing. I don't know if she's aware, but we're aware that the 15th is the release of Icora. Pre-order your boxes online, anti-up gaming, or anti Uh Pre-order price is $100. You'll get your box within the first week of release. Um, if you come in and you curbside uh, pre-order here in the shop, it's only 97 a box. You only got a couple slots left for our allocation. Uh, okay, you're watching a video on somebody painting, and you've got painting to do. I'm so proud of you. That is like top tier. Uh, anywho. Uh, feel free to stop in and uh, curbside order your your uh, box. All right, so we don't want to do this whole screw because we want some of it to be colored. So we just want a little bit of it to be leather because, well, that's how fantasy armor on females work. Um, it is 100% how it looks, not the functionality of it. I mean, uh, I don't know. I think, uh, not to sound like a, a feminist here, but you wouldn't get my butt crawling around a dungeon in this. <laughs> you wouldn't want to see my butt crawling around a dungeon in this. But, um, you know, seeing too many games go bad. Too many adventures go uh, all acid bath and stuff. So I never think I'd be wearing something like this in a place like that. Got a sword sheath right here. This is probably going to be leather. Probably really, uh, come back with some gold embellishments, as is the nature of the beast. Nobody ever, nobody ever said, "Hey, give me that sword over there that's trimmed in silver." Everybody wants the sheath that's gilded in gold. Makes sense. I think I just painted her leg again. Just painted her leg again. That happened. Okay. Got our wet brush. Come in here. Got our magic eraser. Give her a little more pink to her uh, highlights here. Not looking too bad there. A little bit more right here. You know, you, sometimes you'll rub that skin color off. You don't have to redo it, but I'd rather have to repaint the skin color a little bit than uh, see that red paint there. 
I guess in this case, pink. The color is in fact screamer pink. It's not red. We're just making sure that we're getting in all our little nooks and crannies here. Well, you don't have to be perfect. I mean, I, uh, I'm, I'm holding myself to a little bit higher standard because, you know, this is for somebody's uh, uh, favorite game and, you know, they're, they're playing it here in the shop and they came to me for a commission. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm obligated to take this a little further than I would if I was just painting it for my game or for my game. But that's, you know, that's what you do. Whenever somebody, a friend, a customer comes to you and asks you for something, you give them the best service that you can provide. Sorry, I have to pull this a little closer to me to finish painting that bit. I promise I will try to keep it out here for you to see as much as possible. But sometimes to get the line right, get the paint where I need it, I'm going to need to move her to where I can see her and you can't. That's just going to have to agree that sometimes that's the way it's got to be. Doesn't mean I don't want you to see on every step of the way. It just means I haven't grown yet as a creator to allow you that angle. So bear with my shortcomings. I, uh, I did manage to actually get myself into a game. Finally, those of you that know me know what a struggle that can be for me as far as my schedules and my time. Uh, my friend Chris Wall is actually running uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, West Marches style. And this, uh, this gives me the flexibility. Oh, wow. See, I'm not even painting on the screen here. I'm so sorry. I feel like epically bad here. Let me see if I can bring this down a little bit. Uh, actually, See if I can bring that up a little bit. Does that still keep her in frame? Oh, well, that's that's pretty epic right there. Hey? Then I can lean over and maybe you can see some of my hair. All right. So that is going to be most of our red. I'm just looking to shape the brush just a little bit. We got just a little touch of coming here lower back. Laura, really like to hear from you. So I know I'm not screwing up your mini. Okay. Worst case scenario, we just paint. Right? That's our shoulder pad right there. Okay, we're starting to come together. It's starting to look like a mini right there. It's starting to look pretty good. Not too shabby. What we got here? We've got some wraps up here on this blade, but we're going to leave those. Those are probably going to be ooh, one of the last things that we actually paint because we're going to do most of that blade before we do that. Uh, canteen. Canteen should probably be a different color leather. I mean, sure. Our barbarian elf probably skinned a bugbear to get all this leather. But it might not all come from the same bugbear. Or maybe bugbears have different belly armor color. I mean, there's so many, so many thoughts you know, that go into something like this. You know, I mean, sure, there's bright pink bits of me and there's dark pink bits of me, but not the same shade of pink everywhere. I'm a rainbow of pink. So, with that said, what can we grab here? Can we get, um, we could, we could darken the uh, screamer pink with just a touch of something else. Uh, for instance, I have this darker brown 
All right. And this is uh, an ink pigment. So this will offer a lot of color pretty quickly. We're not even going to put it in. Like, let me show you my wet palette here in just a second. And you'll see what I mean when I say I don't even put it into the color. Put it next to the color and I blend what I need. You see, cleaning the tips constantly, constantly, constantly. Because what happens? They go up into that cap and they dry. Everywhere that's not sealed up 100% dries. It's just back to life. There's no, uh, there's no, no cap in the world that, that doesn't do that. I mean, Citadel caps do it, um, although they're kind of notoriously sharp. Nobody likes this setup. You get a lot of dry paint around these edges. You see it flakes off. All right. But um, there's no perfect system. So all you can do is be diligent as the painter and make sure that you're doing everything in your power. And now we're going to go back to our number two for just a second because uh, I saw some things that I would like pink, but I don't need a little tiny brush. And I always prefer. I always try to paint with the largest brush that I can get away with. And since I only use usually three or four brushes when I'm painting miniatures, um, I try to do the bulk of it with my number two. And once I got that tip right where I want it, I'm going to take her and set her aside for a second. I'm going to bring our cloak over here because we completely flaked on doing this sheet. All right. All right. Now, I will say that our barbarian, especially being an elf, you know, connoisseur of weaponry, would probably use the same smith. All right. I'm just going to make sure that, that blue tack is off of there. Now, truthfully, you're probably never going to see this. This is all hidden behind her back under her cloak. But darn it, I know it's there. If I know it's there, I'll do my best to paint it. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Gonna end up with a better model. And you know, she didn't she didn't spring for the base paint job here. She said, I want to get a mini done. I want to get it done right. And I'm hoping that this will be something, a uh, video series that maybe she can look back on and be like, wow, that's so cool. I can actually watch in this series and see my miniature getting painted. So there we go. We've got that done. Now we've got all our bits. All right, there we go. So that's looking good. So we're going to take the end of our brush now. And I, I said we weren't going to do a lot of paint mixing today, but I feel like this is relevant to the conversation that we were having. Um, you can see I'm just going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to drag it over like this. Make sure that I don't have any excess because I, I want to keep some of this uncontaminated. I take some of this and I'm going to drag it over. And you're going to see how they want to mix. That's the flow aid. All right. And we're just going to slowly 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 develop this color i'm going to make sure that it mixes thorough you remember what i told you yesterday the day before the day before that i don't know i've slept since then I had two really nice glasses of bourbon um so now we have this slightly richer redder color uh and i don't know that i'm 100 percent in love with it but it's what we're gonna go with um it'll yield us a different color when we go back over and we're only using it for the canteen anyway, so yeah, maybe we'll use it for the gloves too. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. So now we're going to set our color to the side. I come in here. Just going to dab it on our color. Carefully working our way around all these edges. Really taking the time 
Make sure we get all these details. And, you know, some of this is going to come back and we're going to paint it a different color entirely. Like the cap of this canteen is probably going to get painted in some kind of metallic color. All right, so there we go. There's our canteen painted. Again, I'm not, not super in love with that color, but contrast, well, still stays kind of in the color tree, or the, the same color wheel as the rest of those colors. So I think it'll be okay. You can see really how nice this is to be able to twirl these around. You don't get a ton of cramps in your fingers. Um, Citadel paint holders, love them. They're really fantastic. It took me a while to get used to them. Uh, for a long time, I used a pill bottle. For a long time, I used a uh, wine cork. Um, all these things are great substitutions. And the only reason that I switched to this is because I was painting a lot of Citadel miniatures. And this grabs the larger bases and the smaller bases. And it, it was just really convenient. It was not a necessity. And just starting out, I don't consider it to be a uh, necessity. One of the nice things about it is that it, it loosens up like mm -hmm. this. And on uh, the other side, you can tighten it down. All right. And that, oop. yeah, that happened. That totally just happened. The next time, make sure that it's tightened all the way down, right? Um, so on the other side of things, it will tighten right down and make sure that you don't drop your model. I can't believe I did that, but I guess that's the way that things go sometimes. No harm, no foul. It's a metal miniature. Probably did more damage to the bench than we did to the miniature. So as you can see, this is coming together really nice. Um, we'll probably go ahead and pick this up tomorrow morning. Give this a chance to dry off a little bit. Uh, we'll pick this back up tomorrow. Uh, and we'll probably tear into doing the cloak and the fur and the hair. And we'll see if we can't have this miniature finished up tomorrow. It'd be a really nice, uh, nice start to uh, the miniature painting week. So... Look forward to seeing you all again real soon. I know these have been short. This is not the, the way that I plan on doing everything. This has just been a really crazy day. Uh, that's why we usually aim for doing these videos earlier in the morning so that we have more time to spend on them. And I, I just, I apologize, but, um, you know, when people stop by, you know, it's kind of a crazy time. So sometimes it's just nice to see a little human contact. I suppose that's why we're all here watching videos together. And we're going to roll this back just like this actually works out really nice i'm pretty happy with my, my little camera mount there all right so everybody i hope you've enjoyed this um I look forward to seeing you guys in the morning uh, i'm going to be probably starting up around nine o'clock after the morning broadcast out front um so tune in we'll be finishing this miniature together and enjoying it have a good one